Okay, let's give this a go. In those famous words, is this mic on? Everybody give me a sound check to make sure that you can hear me loud and hopefully clearly on this latest edition of the vidIQ Friday Feeling Hangout. Hello to everybody there who has joined yet again, Friday 11 a.m. PST. Looking forward to that Friday feeling. Some of you hopefully are already there. Some of you will be joining us very soon, a couple more hours in the day before we hit the weekend. And it looks as if people are able to hear me. One person saying we're peaking a little bit. Thank you very much there, Sugar Cat. I will just tone down the microphone a little bit. But let's do some shout outs. Hello, everybody here joining the live stream. Sugar Cat, of course, I've already said hello to you. Don Moody, uh, SK, SGK Kai Vines. Uh, let's see who else we've got. IK Kumar, How To Usama TV. Uh, who else have we got here? David Vargas. Alon Vlog TV, Sabi BG TV, Cobby's Corner. Hello to you. I know you've posted some wonderful comments on the vidIQ videos. Really do appreciate it. Fantastic for you to um, join us again on the live stream. Still continues to be the best username on the live streams. Cookie Man Boy. Hello to you. I think this is your third appearance on the live stream. So thank you very much for joining us. Main channel. Very generic uh, username there. Hello to you. Uh, U-S-N-E-R Doc, hello, play with Greg, uh, BC Truck Rebuild, Repair, Repurpose, I still hear that your channel is doing awesome, uh, hello to you, and hello to everybody else who's joining the live stream here on this Friday afternoon. And what we're going to do today is pretty much a hangout, just talk to you guys, doing a little bit of chat. We are going to cover that big topic on YouTube that's been going on this week. Um, I've already giving you some of my thoughts, but I'm going to have a, a slightly different approach to it today. Um, talk more a little bit about your reactions to it, and that's going to go into next week, of course. And I'd love to hear your views on what you think is happening with these changes to the YouTube Partner Program. But that's going to be a little bit later, because first of all, I want to know where you are in the world. Tell me where you are joining us for all this live stream. I'm interested to know if anybody is joined in the middle of the night or very early on in the morning. We here are in the um, east, western coast of the US or North America. I'm in Vancouver, so it's uh, just gone 11.02 here, but I want to know where you're from. So uh, 3.8 Garage is from California. Hello to you there, Cookie Man Boy, UK. So um, uh, well into the evening now, 7 o'clock. You must have uh, finished your week, which is brilliant. Don Moody, Melbourne, Florida. I almost said Melbourne, uh, you. Um, Australia there. Hello, uh, Tom Tech from the Netherlands. Uh, Portland, Oregon, raining, of course, raining here in Vancouver. Uh, no surprises there. Uh, Minneapolis here for extra sessions media. Liverpool, Northwest England. Northwest England. Um, so hello to you there as well. Uh, I'm a Huddersfield Town fan. Uh, if we're talking about football or soccer, uh, there you are. And so yeah, hello to. Uh, there's more people here. Bath in the UK, Buckinghamshire, uh, Kurdistan, wow, I think that must be uh, the, um, how would I put it, the not the most remote, but the most unique location we've had so far in a live stream there from King uh, Jaeger, hello to you there, uh, Poor People's Problems from London, so lots of people from all over the place here, thank you very much for joining us here on this live stream, and what I want to know next is what's your Friday feeling uh, for today? Uh, are you looking forward to the weekend? Have you got any plans for the weekend? Or is this the start of your work week? I know for some people, Fridays aren't necessarily the best day of the week. So I'd really be interested to know uh, what your Friday feeling is and are you looking forward to the next couple of days and uh, whether or not you've had a good week. Uh, a couple of people still telling me where they're from. Simulation with Daniel from Amsterdam. Uh, VidIQ may be heading to that part of the world uh, in uh, the near future, so uh, stay tuned for more information on that. Uh, so people now talking about what they're going to do um, uh, for Friday and the weekend. 3.8 Garage is making videos and feeling great. Good to hear that. I hope that the uh, YouTube policies are not having an effect. Uh, Simulation with Daniel is uh, uploading a video tomorrow. What video are you going to be uploading? Be interested to know that. 
Uh, Northern Exotic still strategizing my channel. That's interesting. So you're in the planning phases of whatever content you're going to be pushing out. Alco Films attempting to be proactive while also chilling and getting some royalty-free music. Uh, so yeah, that's one of the things that you can do on YouTube if you want to add a bit of spice to your music. We certainly do use that here at vidIQ, some uh, nice music to change the pace and add a little energy sometimes to uh, videos. And I'm sure anybody who works with video often finds that you spend hours and hours editing it and it only really comes together when you put that music in at the end that really adds a pace. Uh, so yeah, uh, Kirby's Corner, uh, we're neighbours with extra sessions media. All right, so we've got a, a close community here going on here. Have you actually met in person? I guess you have done if you're a very close uh, community there. Uh, any other actions uh, that people are taking this weekend? It looks as if we're moving on to Amazon here. Some people talking about it being a pain that they've rejected you. That's, of course, one of the alternatives that we may be looking at here with the recent developments on YouTube. Um, and what I want to uh, briefly look at next is uh, we've talked a little bit about what we're doing over the weekend. Um, but what have your, been your success stories over this week? Uh, one success story, but I want to talk to you a little bit here about vidIQ before you all share all of yours, is that um, due to the nature and the hot topic that YouTube has brought to us with the changes to their partner program, uh, I did a live stream on a Wednesday and also published a couple of videos about the topic. Uh, we've had our most successful day on YouTube in terms of watch time. I think it um, surpassed anything we'd done before by a significant amount, and that was our big success story. But that's a little bit about us. I want to know what your success stories have been here on YouTube uh, over the last week. If we uh, put aside the uh, partner program issues, I'd really like to know if you've really cracked any uh, milestone or goals for your own... Um, own content. Uh, so Northern Exotics here is saying that my live streams are more consistent now, more often and longer. I'm also making more of the video instead of just uh, chat. Uh, okay, so that's a good success story there. I, I guess the more you do live streams, uh, you're getting more confident in front of camera and being able to talk ad lib like uh, what I'm trying to do here. Certainly, I think this is now the fourth uh, live stream and I'm feeling as if I'm getting a lot more comfortable and getting the format down uh, uh, a little more. Uh, great news here from GR, GVR makes double subscribers this week went to 30. Brilliant. So now if you look at it from one point of view, uh, if you were talking to 30 people in a room, that room would be full, uh, all attentive, looking forward to your content. Um, uh, USN ER doc should I just call you user doc that would be really a lot helpful more helpful for me to quickly pronounce it increased views and subs since starting using vidIQ brilliant to hear um, I, I got a shout out from one of the top three youtubers in my genre yesterday and got around 1200 subscribers in a day which is a record for me every man I think you've just trumped everyone there with some fantastic news there let us know who that was um, because getting shout outs from big YouTubers is, is always going to go down well. And that's brilliant. Uh, Northern Exotics here just telling as well that he's nearly at 10,000 views. Uh, not that that's really a goal anymore. It's a bit academic uh, considering what's happened with uh, YouTube's changes recently. Uh, 3.8 Garage reinvigorate my other channel with new content, which was a win. Gained 35 subs this week uh, on the current channel. Looks as if everybody's having some really good news here. So I want to say congratulations to all of you. Uh, and yeah, uh, Alco Films, I would say an achievement for this week was being able to keep up the upload schedule, upload schedule I'm getting into. So there we are, another great tip. Uh, keep up the consistency with your content and hopefully you should see rewards down the future. Uh, Cole Newton, I got 15,000 views on one video. Is that a new record for your content? Very well done there. Uh, Saif Plays is just asking me where do I come from. Uh, you might be able to tell from the accent that I'm not from America or I'm not Canadian. I am originally from the UK. Specifically, if you're really interested in knowing this, I'm from Huddersfield, uh, which is in the north of England, but I moved to Canada uh, three and a half years ago now. And to be honest, I would not want to go back. Vancouver is a spectacular place, beautiful city, especially in the summer. So if you do get a chance, um, do come and visit us. 
Uh, so yeah, some fantastic news stories there. Uh, is, do we have any more before we move on? Um, Kirby's Corner saying we found we found my side channel Brian spanking news is getting half the views and watch time with two vids than this one that has over forty. We're starting to throw our efforts there, which I'm thrilled with. So you've got two channels there. That's an interesting um, predicament now with uh, YouTube's new rules because uh, one of the things. I was going to focus on a little bit later on is uh, people's reactions to the changing of the monetization program and it makes it a lot harder for people to have multiple channels to reach those goals for both channels um so yeah it's interesting that you're trying to work with two um different uh, channels there indian swaggers i got more than 150,000 views with the help of vidiq and let me just say uh we did not pay indian swaggers to um tell us that we very much appreciate it though and any credit you give to vidiq is really credit to you for the hard work that you've put into your content and we're just here to uh, help you point you in the right direction with our tools the social trends i got twenty five thousand plus views on one video by using vidiq's keyword tools now let me stress here i'm not trying to specifically find out the ones where it says that vidiq helps out i just start reading them and all of a sudden i see vidiq at one point and i think uh, brilliant uh, so if anybody has any success stories which don't necessarily have to involve vidIQ, I'm happy to read them out. Um, let's see. Audio sounds like it's peaking. So I'll try and put down audio still a little bit. In the last live stream, people were saying that it wasn't loud enough. So I put it up a bit, but maybe it's not quite right. But really do appreciate your feedback here in the live stream. And I just want to say quickly a hello to anybody who's watching this live stream not as a live stream but as a re-upload broadcast i do appreciate the time you're taking here to watch the content where you can't necessarily interact with it uh but yeah if you do want to join the live screen live streams i try and post a reminder out to people two or three hours in advance currently it's uh, on we're looking at a friday schedule but i may change that and i'd love to hear your comments if you would prefer a different time but yeah friday feeling hangout a uh, general chat seems to be the the way we're going for but we did a live stream on Wednesday because of the big news, and I'm sure that will happen more in the future. Um, so there we are. Right. And uh, thank you for all your success success stories this this week. Uh, really do appreciate it. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about success stories maybe next week. Um, but to try and continue with a little bit of structure in this live stream, I'm going to move on to the big YouTube story of the week and talk about it a little more from your point of view. Just to recap, if you have been leave, living in some sort of YouTube cave for the last week and you're not aware of what's happened, YouTube are changing the goalposts in terms of monetizing your content. Previously, you needed just 10,000 views to monetize your content. And over the last couple of weeks, we've been getting a lot of people, uh, comments from people saying, I've now reached that milestone. When are YouTube going to monetize my content? Well, the reason they haven't done that is because in the background, they'd be working on this new policy and this is it. You now need at least 1,000 lifetime subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time or 240,000 minutes of watch time over the last 12 months in order to be ineligible. Uh, in order to be eligible. Those who previously had 10,000 views but didn't reach the new criteria have until February the 30th, 20th to try and reach those goals and then they're going to be kicked off of the monetization as well so uh, not particularly good news for a lot of you who have been in uh, that situation and uh, now i wanted to just talk a little bit more about what i've been seeing from general reactions uh, from uh, you youtubers and uh, larger youtubers and whatnot and i've tried to make a, a couple of notes here just to remind myself of the things that people are talking about so as I briefly mentioned earlier, I think Kirby's Corner mentioned it, um, people with multiple channels now who like to do a channel maybe on gaming and then maybe a vlogs, maybe like a tech review, so like trying to really distinguish different categories of channels, uh, they're going to find it a big struggle. Maybe one of their channels reach the requirements and they can monetize it, but then all their, potentially their other channels work quite as big. There's usually one main channel from a video creator and then... Um, the child channels and that could be a big problem it may force youtubers to go and focus on one channel diversifying their content does that really work for their subscribers difficult thing to say at the moment does that mean youtubers are probably going to focus on one channel in the future 
Well, that seems to be how it will be for uh, video creators uh, in the short term, at least. Now, another thing I noticed, and a lot of you posted about this in particular, is that a lot of YouTubers uh, qualify for 4,000 watch time hours, but they don't meet 1,000 subscribers. And if there's anybody on the chat who um, is in that zone, let me know now. And I want to ask you a couple of questions about this. My assumption is that you've had one or two videos that have been really successful, kind of semi-viral videos that have got maybe 10,000, 20,000 views and have really pushed up your watch time. But you haven't been able to maintain that through your channel, whether it's because that one video was evergreen content or viewers just came for that one video and then they're done and then they've moved off and you haven't been able to post consistently so you're not able to just gradually grow your audience i think that tends to be where a lot of people are finding the issue so we've already got a couple of people here like uh, amanda allotment you're saying yes it's happened to you so the question i would um ask you is um how many subscribers do you have and uh, how long has it taken you to get to those subscribers? And how long have you been able to monetize your content in the past? It would be interesting to find out information like that. You, you don't have to tell me everything, uh, but it would just be interesting to sort of get your general ideas about what, uh, what's happened there. A Northern Exotic saying, I'm on 350 hours, 238 subs. My first channel, three months old. So uh, you're all still some way behind reaching uh, the targets at the moment. But 350 hours would mean that you've probably got maybe a few thousand views. So maybe at one point you're thinking, I'm getting close to this um, milestone. And now it's been taken well back and very difficult to... Um, to hit. Uh, social trends here asking, do you think that YouTube's new partner program is a result of Logan Paul's incident? I would say no. Um, Tim Schmoyer just posted an email about this where um, the Logan Paul thing brings YouTuber adpocalypse into sharp focus again. But what this um, policy change is attempting to do is stop uh, YouTubers who just create channels, re-upload content from other video creators and uh, just trying to make a quick book and uh, maybe controversial content. For example, for every Logan Paul incident at the top, there's probably 50 to 100 incidents much lower down the food chain that we never hear about that YouTube really needs to take care of to protect its advertisers as well. So I think that's the reason. It's almost a coincidence that I think that the Logan Paul thing came at the same time. Uh, answer now from uh, Amanda's allotment. 664 subs since March last year. Only been monetized a month. Okay, so at that rate, it sounds like you're probably going to hit a thousand subscribers. Maybe in the summer, you have to think about your exponential growth. It probably took you a very long time to get to 100 subscribers, then less time to get to 200, less time to get to 500, and so on. Um, but it sounds like you're not going to hit that February threshold, so you're going to have money in that AdSense account, but then it's just going to stay there for a little bit. And I think that's the other point I wanted to move on to. Um, a lot of people have been saying how uh, these are the sort of YouTube creators who are comfortable and have been monetized for a while. They're saying that many of these YouTubers who were in the bracket of having 10,000 views but not the watch time have been earning this money that's been going into AdSense, but the AdSense threshold is $100 before they pay out and they haven't reached that yet. So technically speaking, They've not been able to earn any money off YouTube. Yes, it's there waiting for them to, to be paid out by YouTube, but they haven't reached it yet. And because of the new rules, they may never reach it. Some people have been complaining that YouTube uh, are holding this money back. There's probably uh, thousands of YouTubers in this zone where they haven't quite reached $100 and it's just going to sit there in the AdSense account. Um, talks about lawsuits and class action stuff going on, but uh, it just all makes it sound very, very messy. And so that's another opinion that's been coming from the top YouTubers that uh, why are small YouTubers complaining? Because they won't have actually got any of this money yet. And I can understand that point of view. When I was talking about it on uh, Wednesday, my attitude was that if you're so desperate to start monetizing your content 
and you're only earning maybe a hundred dollars in a year then maybe you're not focusing on the right things on youtube youtube the monetization aspect should come way down the line when you're a much larger channel and almost as an afterthought building your audience delivering value to your audience uh should be a much higher priority but anyway that was one of my uh, personal opinions that i gave on wednesday the next thing that's happened is that it's legitimized sub for sub and let me give you an example here this is uh quite funny uh, if i just uh bear with me yeah okay so you can see the uh, um, web page now so this is a creator blog uh where youtube posted their changes to the a monetization system on um, Tuesday and we've got 25,000 comments here and let's just have a sample look at these uh, now is the time to help each other please subscribe uh, to each of his channels that's sub for sub um, another one here sub for sub uh, another one here anyone have thoughts on getting 40,000 hours of watch time a year thanks a lot I will sub back to you if you sub to me uh, and then there's another one here. Well, it's the same person posting sub for sub. And then another one posting sub for sub. So isn't that ironic that what uh, YouTube have basically set up here is a system where to get the uh, monetization that you want, you should be doing as much sub for sub um, stuff as you possibly can. Um, I posted a video on vidIQ uh, three or four months back saying that YouTube was a complete waste of time. And now maybe is it? it isn't. I would love to know if some of you who are in that area of not being at a thousand subscribers, are you going to really push your subscribers for a sub for sub uh, to try and get them? Because now you, you just need a number. You're not necessarily interested in, this, in, in if this subscriber is going to watch your content. You're just interested in that number to boost you up to a thousand subscribers. So I'd love to um, hear your thoughts on that particular area are you going to start asking for sub for sub if you need to get up there that yeah so kirby's corner is just agreeing with me there um producer seven saying i have 150,000 uh watch time minutes and 33 to subs my channel's been up for six months monetized for four months and i have 77 dollars in the bucket so this is a classic example of a YouTuber who's now stuck in that dead zone. They've uh, been earning a little bit of money to start money to, uh, to start their YouTube channel. It's probably felt like a, a good achievement and that you're earning something back from YouTube and all of a sudden that's going to stop. Are you still motivated to carry on even if you can't monetize your content? Um, but that's what I'd uh, want to hear from you. Uh, let's see what else are we seeing here on the comments uh i'm wanting so northern exotics wanting the time not the subs jgr survival says the subs have to be real otherwise you'll never get the views and a watch time that is true but what about people who've already hit the watch time uh, numbers they just need the subscribers um I would think building community and getting subs from that perspective would be more sustainable. Sustainable, absolutely. In the long term, you're perfectly right there, user doc. But in the short term, people need these subscribers to potentially monetize their content. Dustin Vang says, "I feel like 1,000 subscribers would be their new 100 subscriber mark." And uh, Cody Vlog saying, "The monetizing thing doesn't bother me at all, to be honest." So, as always, in a community as big as YouTube, we've got a lot of contrasting opinions, but some uh, very good ones there. Another thing I've noticed as well on uh, YouTube uh, is, let's see if we can get this to work. Uh, did that? Yeah, that's transitioned right. Let's see if I can find the right screenshot here. This comes from uh, one of our uh, YouTubers. Unfortunately, I haven't got it here. Um, it's not appearing on screen, so I'll have to explain what it is. Uh, there's a YouTuber called Frank Foti, I think, who posts often in our videos. And he says that he's now pinning comments to his videos. So his comment is at the top of the videos and he's basically appealing to his um, audience saying, basically, look, I need to get 
up to 1,000 subscribers to monetize my content, uh, would you do the uh, honorable, delightful thing and subscribe to my channel? So there's two different forms of communication there that now could potentially be saturated by YouTubers attempting to get up to 1,000 subscribers. Uh, that's something I've certainly seen. Um, and it's, I guess, another tactic, again, legitimized by YouTube to get up to that, uh, that threshold. Now, I did have some comments here uh, which were interesting. And so Edward Griffin here saying, I'm part of the 1%. Now, this 1% um talks about when youtube introduces policies 99 percent of youtubers um less earn less than 100 dollars a year uh in that bracket of over 10,000 subscribers but less than um watch time and subscriber threshold uh, but edward griffin here is saying he has less than a thousand subs but earn more than $60 in a, a revenue in the last 28 days and $400 in the last year. So that's a, a tidy sum. Now, it's a, a small but significant income. You could buy a new camera with that. Uh, I use my ad revenue to pay for things like vidIQ subscription. And now it's a shame that this policy may prevent him from earning the money from his channel to be able to buy equipment and uh, subscribe to vidIQ. And he's in a 1%, but I'm, the number of comments I've seen on this takes us well beyond 1%. Another one here uh, from uh, People of the Free Gift. What upset me was the fact that finally, after three years, I've been working obviously a long time on this on YouTube, I was almost at the point of reaching $100 of AdSense. Uh, requirement to receive payments and then have the feeling of com accomplishment totally smashed. So there is beyond monetary value, there is this feeling of achievement, like something that is very prevalent in mobile games that you're always working to that next achievement to unlock that chest or uh, buy a new farm or unlock coins or, or anything. And YouTube, that's really an addictive thing to strive towards. But in this story, we have somebody who's worked for three years just to earn $100, they've got 151 subscribers, so it's likely now that they would never reach that um, target and be able to uh, withdraw that $100, and that's kind of a sad story, and it's probably one in a thousand that YouTube are never going to see. Uh, and then this is just a typical example of uh, somebody posting a comment, please sub me, I'll sub back, we'll help each other reach 1,000 subs. Uh, so there we are. So I'd love to hear your thoughts generally. Those are all my, all the things that I've been finding out about the reactions uh, from uh, YouTubers. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts generally speaking on, on some of the things I brought up here. So let's have a look, go back to my studio mode. It means I can read the chat here. Um, so a bit of motivation here ranger savin saying um hey ferret keep making good content uh, that's all you can do uh, yeah i absolutely agree the monetization should not be the single deciding factor on whether you make youtube videos uh, and if people are going to be discouraged by these monetization changes maybe that's an excuse you're looking for to just stop making content um and another thing we should look at is the different revenue streams. So I'm going to post that question to you as well. I, I won't give you the answers here. YouTube controls AdSense totally. They can snap their fingers just as they have done and you lose monetization. But that's not the only way you can monetize content on YouTube. So let me know the different ways there are of monetizing content on YouTube. And I'll go into a little more detail as you, as you bring them, them up. A uh, good comment here from Amanda's allotment. I will never be discouraged. That's uh, brilliant to hear. Uh, Coleman Home, this is a long username. CM Coleman Home Recipes and Lifestyle. Anytime you take away a reward, people feel cheated and question when the changes will happen again. So yeah, excellent point there. And this is something that maybe larger channels uh, can't totally appreciate. There's a, a definite divide between the haves and the have-nots. 
the haves being those who can monetize freely. They can't understand why people are so desperate to earn one or two dollars a day. And then the have nots who feel as if uh, monetization is a next step towards being a, a, a better YouTuber who can earn income. So absolutely great uh, comment there. Uh, brain spanking news. If you build it, they will come. And if you build it better, more will come. Bit of a uh, Wayne's world there. Thank you very much. Uh, Rob, do you think that YouTube did this because there isn't enough ads available? Uh, not necessarily. I think this is, uh, this is, I think, YouTube going uh, maybe two or three steps back after jumping hundreds of steps forward. Because pre-2013, this type of whole-scale monetization opportunity didn't exist on YouTube. You had to be invited by YouTube themselves. And then it opened up to everybody and it's taken a good few years for YouTube to suddenly realize, well, maybe there's a little too much dodgy content and we're having a difficulty controlling this. We need to rein things back. So, yeah, for people who've been on this platform for a long time, um, they will remember when it was almost impossible to be monetized. You had to be invited. So the, the opportunities are still very much in our favor. Let's see what else. What other comments do we have? Uh, Nitroartvideo.com. I've been trying to find out why my views per video have dropped over the last three months by eighty percent. Something you probably need to check in your analytics. Check your suggested traffic. That's probably where you need to find out if something's dropped off very quickly, very significantly. Maybe you're not getting as many suggested videos, or the searches have um, dropped off. So you may need to change your metadata to reconnect with uh, more content. Uh, definitely check that out. Uh, let's see. Uh, Zion GTV. Also, as far as money goes, I know that some people will feel discouraged, but that's why most bigger YouTubers make money from affiliate links. So that's something to look for, into for everyone. Okay, so there we are. Perfect. Thank you. You can make money on YouTube whenever you want. If you have zero subscribers and one viewer, if you can get them to click an affiliate link to buy a Mercedes at $20,000 with a 10% kickback, you've just earned yourself $2,000. So affiliate links predominantly on uh, Amazon are a, a big way to uh, run a business on YouTube without any control from YouTube as it stands. So uh, thank you very much there for the pointing it out. Um, another one here, CAG Reactions. I have uh, 240,000 413 minutes. Whew! Just made it. And almost 1,300 subscribers. Why does my channel say it does not meet the requirements? It's probably because YouTube have got an enormous backlog at the moment, um, considering that they've been um, bringing this policy. I wouldn't be surprised if you don't hear from YouTube until after the 20th of February. Um, so, yeah, I think for people who are just over that threshold, there's going to be quite a, a wait time as well. As well. Uh, interesting uh Comment from here from Dustin Vang. You, uh, PewDiePie didn't get partnered until he had 40,000 subscribers. Uh, so uh, there we are. A uh, good point there. YouTube would benefit strategically to institute measures decreasing the schism between the haves and the haves not. So following on from uh, my point there. And I think YouTube just needs to be more transparent and communicate better with their, um, with their uh, audience and the, the people who use their products. I think might be a good answer there. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm just going to look a little bit more now at the different revenue streams that you can earn from YouTube, uh, which aren't controlled by AdSense. So we've already had affiliate links. There's Patreon, uh, quite a lot of channels that don't have a large subscriber base, but have a hardcore community. I've said to their audience, Hey, look, uh, we're finding it difficult here on money to monetize content on YouTube. If you want to uh, donate to us and keep this content running as a channel, uh, please donate five, ten, twenty-five dollars to Patreon. Um, this is something that YouTubers such as Tim Schmoyer does uh, on his channel, uh, Video Creators. And so that's certainly a way forward. Another option is brand deals, whereby you contact a particular brand uh, who have a product that's. Uh, of an interest to your channel and your particular category and say, do you want to um, a feature in one of my videos? I'll do a, a product placement. I'll talk about the products and work it into one of my videos. 
and um, you can pay me for it. Or the company contacts them. I know Sean Juris uh, is very big on doing brand deals and has uh, made a significant income from that. Again, nothing really YouTube can do in terms of controlling that other than to make sure that uh, you know as a viewer that it's paid promotion. Uh, other ways we have of earning income is to sell your own products. If you want to sell a book, I've just spoken to a YouTuber called uh, Nareen's Kitchen, who, as well as having a channel on YouTube, also sells cookbooks and PDFs. So you can buy her products again completely off of YouTube. And I'm sure there's one other ad revenue. Oh, yes, yeah, so I just remembered it. Um, the one other uh, merchandising way you can go, and this is going to take uh, 20 seconds, uh, but let me demonstrate. Have a guess what this is. Have a guess how you can earn income uh, through different methods um, other than products. And I should say, obviously, vidIQ is a product, and that's what we uh, uh, sell to help uh, YouTubers get more views in less time. Um, YouTube doesn't control that. But what we could also do, if we really wanted to, is merchandise. We could sell uh, T-shirts, uh, glasses, fidget spinners. Uh, let me know in the comments if you would really love this sort of stuff. And uh, maybe we'll open up a merch store. But yeah, that is uh, another way that YouTube has no control over your income. And that's how you can earn on YouTube. Again, a lot of YouTubers look at this, uh, do this. Logan Paul in particular sells a hell of a lot of merchandise on his channel. So he's not just making money from AdSense. So there we are. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, Rob, you should check out my channel. I guarantee you will enjoy it. Uh, maybe I will do towards the end. We are going to do some channel audits uh, towards the end of the live stream. Uh, I have a friend who has 25,000 plus subscribers and his watch time is 28,000 hours and his monetization has is stopped. Any reasons? No clue, to be honest. That's definitely one they'll need to check with uh, YouTube. Maybe they've broken community guidelines or something along those lines that they would have to check. Um, always difficult and important almost impossible to answer individual issues, but that sounds like something very strange has uh, gone on. Uh, Boss Nass uh, has says, I, I can just say that YouTube is the only platform who give you money for our satisfaction. Who else does? I, another person, I think Roberto Blake, or no, it was Sean Cannell who said that when you look at it, if you forget about monetization, YouTube is still the best platform for your voice and spreading it to the world it's still the most reliable has the fastest video playback has the best tools and that's one of the reasons why it is the dominant force in uh, online video we obviously have a com potential competitors from facebook and amazon um but they're gonna have to do a lot to shift uh youtube as it is and all of you here whether you agree with YouTube's policy changes, you're here right now engaging in the community, in the conversation and you're using YouTube. Um, is it going to be hard to start all over again on a different video platform? Uh, Zion also says, uh, also something else uh, everyone can do is look at the analytics to see what's working and what's not and focus on that. Absolutely. And we've got plenty of tools here at um, vidIQ to help you uh, along the way with that. Um, let's see. It's the best self-branding website, Dustin Vang is saying. I'm not sure what he's referring to there, but uh, obviously uh, branding is very important on your channel to identify yourself and um, make an audience associate and just know exactly that it's you whenever you're watching something. I mean, we've got the vidIQ green screen here working relatively well today, uh, telling you exactly what you're watching and uh, what it's about. Uh, world of crazies, as we see creators suggested, uh, my question is how does it affect our video in search or recommended videos? Um, so the creator suggested the column down the right hand side on desktops, uh, pushing videos. This is where you really need to use your metadata to make sure that you connect your videos with similar videos. Uh, and your own videos, so including perhaps your channel name in your tags, really helps connect YouTube join the dots. So it knows when to push your content if the audience is uh, finding it useful. 
Uh, man, broke man's PC. Honestly, I find that YouTube always recommends my worst edited videos. Yeah, YouTube doesn't always get it right, especially with the AI um, and machine learning, which we've all found out with the recent demonetization tool. And that seems so long ago. Uh, we published a video earlier on this week, which was to promote our new controversial keywords tool where we're trying to help YouTubers avoid the dreaded yellow icon. That's one form of demonetization, but now this big, huge wave of uh, mass channel demonetizations has come in, which is, seems to have uh, taken over uh, everything. Uh, Brain Spanking News, we love Roberto Blake. He said our, our Corby's Corner channel made him want to have kids. Wow. That's a big influence there. Um, maybe you should check back with him on a year and see if he's uh, followed up on uh, on that desire. A simulation with Daniel asked, did YouTube update that when you like a live stream, it will be updated automatically? You don't have to refresh a page. I think it does, yeah. Whenever I like a video here on vidIQ, I've sorted it out so it posts a tweet as well, and it seems to be uh, pretty immediate, even when it is uh, live streams. I should also mention, that does remind me of something else as well, that a lot of YouTubers are worried that, worried that if their content is not monetized, YouTube doesn't promote it, which makes sense to YouTubers. Like, why would YouTube bother promoting content when it's not monetized? But we're all told that that's not true. YouTube will not uh, diminish the potential of a video's growth and reach an audience just because it's not monetized um so yeah if you are worried about that uh, this is something that tim schmeyer said and uh, i'm thinking we'll be posting more about this next week uh he doesn't believe that there's any impact there um we'll never be 100 percent sure but i would be surprised if youtube would do that do that as well it, at the moment it's like a, a rumor or a myth but if it was any actual hard evidence i think we probably would have heard about that now uh, so there we are. Um, anything else we got here? Uh, any thoughts on cooking videos, please? Uh, Shrav's cookbook. Interesting, you should ask that. I've uh, interviewed uh, Nareen's Kitchen, uh, which is a cooking channel, and uh, that will be going live in the next couple of weeks. So uh, make sure to t stay tuned for that. Uh, VidIQ, ever heard of geotagging? It's essentially setting a custom location where the video is recorded in the settings and viewers from that area is most likely get the video recommended i yeah i used to do this way back this was 2013 i think but i never noticed any particular uh, change from that so i uh, can never say for certain with youtube 100 percent, but i don't think it makes any particular difference um bosnas here saying that live stream one hour duration seven 17 hours of watch time yeah so so here's a good idea for getting a lot of watch time if you need watch time and uh you um, need an audience to be watching your content. Let's say you have 100 subscribers and you do a live stream for an hour and 10 of those subscribers watch that live stream for its entirety. That's 10 hours of watch time right there. Uh, so live stream is definitely a good way of getting a lot of watch time. It's what's uh, effect made a quite a positive impact on our watch time. So uh, yeah, there we are. Okay. Lots of wonderful feedback and comments here about uh, the um, YouTube developments on the partner program. And there's going to be a lot more. I'm doing a lot more content on this. And uh, stay tuned next week. We might have a little something to show you uh, from vidIQ regarding uh, the partner program. Um, but I'll, I'll leave it a little hush hush for there now. Stay tuned. Hopefully we will have something exciting uh, to show you uh, next week. What we're going to do with the remaining time, however, is some channel audits. I know this tends to be your absolute favorite part of the um, live stream. This is why I leave it until the end. So sort of like build up anticipation and uh, keep you watching a little YouTube dirty tactic, maybe. Um, so what we're going to do is a couple of channel audits. Now, do bear in mind, I'm still working on my live streams. And whenever I do a channel audit, the computer grinds to a near halt. Hopefully, that's not going to be the case so much on this one. And now, I've already agreed to do a, a audit on somebody who's on the live stream right now who just said, boom. And it is Extra Sessions Media. And the reason I am going to audit this channel is because... 
uh, Extra Sessions Media is doing a lot of help here with um, moderating the comments on the live stream, which I could never possibly do um, by myself, and it really is appreciated. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just loading up the screen in the background, and then we're going to take a look at his uh, channel uh, right now. So let's see if I click the button. Does that work? Can you all see that? I hope so. And as I'm doing this channel audit, I can't see any of your comments, so I do apologize a little bit about that. But here we are. We are now on Extra Sessions Media um, channel. And uh, I'm going to look at quite a few things here. So first of all, Extra Sessions Media, a big channel banner. Uh, the one concern here I have is that I don't necessarily completely know what this channel is about. Um, there is no tagline here. Um, I think from what you've posted in uh, conversations we've had, you're saying that it's about uh, DJing, but that's not entirely clear on your main page. So I'm just going to click the About page and wait for YouTube to load. And then hopefully Mike gives a little more information. So here we are. Extra Sessions Media is a channel dedicated to DJing gear reviews and tutorials in both English and Korean. Wow, interesting. Um, so you might want to try and include that. That's a unique selling point that you're delivering content in two different languages. Uh, so definitely mention that. You joined six months ago and have seven and a half thousand views so far. Uh, things I do like about the channel is that you've already got a channel trailer uh, up and running here, which is good. You've already got some related channels, so there's a bit of collaboration going on here. Uh, but here is already one um, fatal error that uh, you have on your main channel page is that you're not using your playlist of a full effect. It's that usual recent uploads one. And the first playlist should be more about what your channel about, uh, either it, uh, whether it be about um, some of your best videos that you've done, not necessarily not necessarily the uh, ones with the most views, but ones that really sell your channel and give uh, the viewer an idea of what you're doing. For example, there might be on your channel a video. Uh, specifically in English and one in Korean, which isn't a channel trailer, but it, it gives you an idea of what the viewer is jumping into whenever I, they um, join. And you only have uh, one playlist and created playlist. So you want to beef this up, really, and try and put as many playlists on there as possible. Let's have a look at your video page now. See what we can see here. Uh, okay, so you're getting roughly between 50 and 100 views per video, which is consistent and good compared to your subscriber base. So uh, views to subscriber is fairly high. Consistency looks to be good. So we got one from a day ago, three days ago, and then one last week, and then three two weeks ago, and then three three weeks ago. So a good level of consistency here. Uh, comments I would have about the thumbnails is these generic thumbnails tend to get quite boring quite quickly for the viewer. Um, if they see the same thumbnail over and over again, it's hard to distinguish the difference. I know you're putting some text in there, but that doesn't always work um, with YouTube thumbnails because once they see one of your thumbnails, and then they maybe see it again. They may just glance past it and think, oh, I've already seen this video because the thumbnail looks very similar. Um, so maybe think about changing up your thumbnails a little bit if possible. And um, let's see. There probably needs to be a, just a little bit more work done, like on this particular one. The, um, the text here is slightly difficult to read on the red background. So maybe think a little bit more about working on your thumbnails and what they uh, could potentially do for your channel. 
Uh, if we look at uh, video length, it tends to be quite spur uh, There's a lot of different video lengths. So we've got four minutes, we've got one minute, we've got 10 minutes. Um, and another thing is how personal personable is this? Oh, sorry, how personal is this channel? We're not seeing uh, you anywhere in the uh, videos. So do you have any channel updates? Uh, are you are you actually speaking in these videos or is it just music? I think that's a problem that uh, quite a lot of music channels have is that they just stick music on there. Uh, and a viewer may come and listen to one bit of music and enjoy it, but that doesn't necessarily keep them in the in the in your ecosystem, your community. Um, so, I mean, we've got here one here, state of a channel, 2008 update. That would be a perfect one where you can put yourself in front of video, uh, so we can at least get to uh, see who you are and what you're about. I'm going to get to the most popular ones now and see if you do have any really successful ones. Um, so here we are, a, a more popular than any other video, a review on a uh, what looks to be a turntable. I got what that's got three times as many views as anything else. Could you have maybe uh, followed up on this video? Like maybe pros or specific cons or was there an opportunity here to double down on this video? I'm going to click on it now and uh, wait a inordinate amount of time for the screen to load. And then we're going to have a look at some of the video scorecard stuff which may tell us a little more about your content. So it looks as if you've got a good range of tags here and mix in uh, short keywords. So the big ticket ones trying to uh, target um, a general audience in case the video goes big. But also we've got some sh uh, long tail keywords here, best practice and prep gear 2017. You might want to change that to 2018 now, obviously with a change of year. Um, but here we are with ranks number one on one of your uh, keywords, very long tail keyword. Probably not many people searching for it, but that's exactly the type of audience you're looking for as a small channel. Best gear for MIDI DJs to move to media players. So you might want to uh, cut that down and say and do another keyword, which is best gear for mini DJs or um, best gear to move to media players. Um, but that this is a good example of some keywords. To so have a number one rant keyword as a channel as small as yours is a, a awesome stuff. Uh, let's have a look at your feedback here. Uh, you're loving all the comments here. So you're making sure that you're getting involved in your community, which is excellent. And I would assume that you've replied to some of your comments. There we are. So it looks as if you're replying to comments as well and taking time to reply to those comments. So that's brilliant work there. So I'd love to be able to watch one of your videos at length, but obviously uh, the live stream is probably not going to allow me to do that. But I hope you've got some useful information there, Extra Sessions Media, about your channel uh, in general. Uh, it looks as if maybe you want to be a bit clearer with your message uh, when y people are on your channel and also working a little more on your thumbnails uh, to uh, make them more appealing to the viewers and uh, what was the other thing it was maybe double down on your most popular video see if there's any uh, potential there to uh, improve uh, that so I hope there's some useful uh, information there that you can take hold of and any other YouTubers who are watching that, if you can um, take any advice on that, then absolutely. Okay, uh, we've got time for one more, um, one more audit. And I think um, we are going to choose, um, who is it who posted some really good stuff earlier on? I'm trying to remember, a name escapes me. Um, who was it now? My mind's gone, so I'm going to have to open it up to somebody else. So the um, the question is: the first person to type this um, type this answer in uh, gets a channel audit of the merchandise I was showing you earlier from VidIQ, which is a one piece of merchandise you can no longer see on screen. We've got the glasses, we've got the shirt. What was the other uh, merchandise? 
Who's going to get the answer first? There we are. Well, 3.8 Garage said it was me, Rob, and then answered with Fidget Spinner, and you are indeed correct. That was the other uh, item of merchandise that you could potentially get from vidIQ if we had a shop. And now I'm going to look at your channel, so thank you there. Uh, as usual, give me a few hours to get the internet working here so I can have a look at your channel. It was 3.8 Garage, which should be fairly easy to find. Is that the name of your channel? Um, you might just have to let me know because I'm not sure I can see it here. Let's see if it comes up. I think I've got it. Does it have an engine light as your channel avatar? 3.8 Garage. 184 subscribers just before we bring it on screen. I'm not sure if anybody heard that, but that was the channel intro kicking off there. Okay, we have the right channel, and here it is, general browser page. There we go. So this is 3.8 Garage's channel. Um, interesting font there on the, on the channel banner. I love the avatar. Because that really gives you an instant idea of what the channel is probably about, which is to help you with your car engine, I assume. But again, you might just want to think of some sort of message or tagline uh, for your uh, channel banner. Like, who should be watching and why type of thing. Very quickly for us, vidIQ, it's more views, less time. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, by the way, I, I'm seeing on the... Um, live stream that we may be getting some drop offs so i do apologize if that's happening but i uh, will go back to the channel let's go to the about page it's nice that you got a channel introduction as well uh are you a car enthusiast or do you want to learn about modifying cars if so you're in the right place uh, 3.8 cars is all about teaching car enthusiasts about the basic fundamentals so I think you need to try and encapsulate this paragraph into a sentence to potentially add to your channel banner, which would be uh, good. Uh, joined on the 20, uh, September 8th, 2016, coming up to 20,000 views. Let's have a look at, uh, oh, let's go back to your homepage again. I just want to see how you're doing with your uh, playlists. And if you do want more information about playlists when I'm talking about them, Make sure to go to uh, the video that I did on playlists and how they can really help uh, grow your channel. So here we go again. Uploads is your first playlist. Change that playlist and add more playlists to your homepage. Really sell uh, your channel if you can. And computer really stop failing uh, if you wouldn't mind. Let's get back to the screen. So yeah, it looks as if here that you just have the um, the one playlist, maybe two. So yeah, the the two classic playlists, and this. This tells me that you've not really done anything with your homepage. You've just put the two most popular types of playlists that you can put on. Really think about what playlists you want to present to your audience to really capture them. Because they may not want to know about thank you music. Finally starts playing there. You, the, your viewers who are visiting for the first time may not want to know how to install a manual, fats, manual fan switch. They may, may want to know something a lot more... Um, wholesale or, or generic more about your channel got your popular uploads here um some some rec some decent successes hood vents seven thousand uh, views uh, one here with four and a half thousand views and this one you put on captions but you haven't done it on any others um is it just because you found it too much hard work that might be interesting to know uh, let's go to your videos now. Let's have a look at the close look at playlists in general. I've seen a lot of white here, 
Um, you might want to be careful using white as a background on your thumbnails because that helps let them blend into the background, especially on a desktop where it's uh, there's a lot of white. Um, you want to try and use colors that contrast with uh, YouTube if possible. So maybe like a green or a blue uh, to give it a, a different background. And trouble codes using your phone it might be worth putting in uh, your some branding on your channel because uh, if you look at the, the differences here we've got canned tune versus custom tune and then how to pull trouble codes using your phone if a viewer was looking at those two thumbnails would they be able to tell that they're from the same video creator because they look totally different so there's a lack of consistency there a little bit in terms of uh, your thumbnails and if you want to build an audience uh, consistency within your branding is quite important and you're using completely different fonts in each of the thumbnails so it looks as if you're going for an experimentation period here with how you want your um, content to look so maybe just think on defining a, a strategy and a branding uh, about that but your consistency looks fairly good well I'm, ah, now actually I'm saying your consistency looks fairly good but these are the recent uploads I think and you uh, had a big five six month gap here now obviously life sometimes gets in the way so you, you maybe had no control over this but you're only let's see you're only seven videos into creating content recently uh, so there's a, there's a lot of work to be done here maybe you've lost some momentum from those earlier videos and in general yeah there's not there's not many videos here as well so it's still a, a a channel very much in its infancy which actually sort of makes me take back some of the comments to say for a channel that's only got around 15 to 20 videos this is a really good start um i think you just need to think about really nailing down your uh, branding a little more so that we know that we're always coming to 3.8 garage let's now look at your most popular video if I can find it again where was it, it had 7,000 views didn't it and it seems to there we are hood vents keeping out water there is something to be said for having simple thumbnails like you have here uh, that does exactly what it says on the tin especially useful for tutorials so I don't have a problem with that But again, it's the same with Extra Sessions Media. There's a, maybe a lack of personal touch there. Uh, maybe you could do some fancy poses like uh, I do, maybe pointing at uh, an engine or having a quizzical look. And I'm doing all these gestures now and you can't see them, uh, which is good, a good job there, Rob. Well done. Okay, let's have a look at the title. Hood Vents Keeping Out Water. Seems fairly straightforward. Interesting likes to dislikes ratio here. Is this a controversial one that people disagreeing with what you've said here? Or have you made some sort of mistake maybe? Uh, the SEO tells me you have zero creator suggested so that your videos are not necessarily linking together. So maybe you want to include your channel name in the video tags, which I don't think you've done. And maybe some um, tags that associate your channel a bit more if possible looks as if it's well ranked though um, here we have um, a lot of high ranked tags so this is a perfect example of a channel with not many subscribers but who is really focused on what looks to be a specific tag here of hood scoop explained hood scoop rain bonnet vents and rain and really hit like a tiny viral video I know saying viral sounds a little silly when um, it's only got 7,000 views but every YouTuber has got to start somewhere and this is an, a, an ideal um, hit I guess for you so maybe look more on do you have some authority on on hood vents that you can maybe um, do a follow up one saying keeping out snow and keeping out snakes keeping out uh, Marvel superheroes I don't know I'm going a little crazy there but just some uh, some random ideas on how you may be, able, may be able to produce more content on this area 
Um, <laughs> so it's, some people, it looks as if some people are saying that you state the obvious, but not everybody's going to know the answer to this. You've got 7,000 views from it, so don't worry about the haters. You just produce the content that you want to produce uh, for your viewers. There we are. I'm going to end the audit there. I hope you found some useful information on that particular topic. And we've gone over time. Phew. Uh, there's two channel audits there. I do promise uh, people that in the future I want to do more channel audits. But as you can see, I'm having an absolute nightmare with the speed of the uh, uh, screens loading up. And I think it must be OBS is taking up uh, far too much of my bandwidth uh, here. Uh, it seems to be running slowly anyway. I'm not, I, again, I apologize if, this is, if a lot of this is dropping out. But yeah, there's still a little tweaking going on that I want to do on the live streams. Um, so uh, there we are. Uh, Shanette Carlo is doing a fantastic job of trying to um, get them to be picked for a channel audit with these wonderful emojis of uh, sticking their hand up. But uh, we really are out of time, unfortunately. And uh, as I say, I want to um, create a live stream where it is just all about channel audits and not uh, just something tacks on at the end. Um, so there we are. I hope you enjoyed this live stream. Um, again, still working on the structure to make it work best for you. Um, so let me know in the comments uh, if there's anything you would like to change. So uh, if you want to start saying your goodbyes now, um, we'll certainly jump into the chat and uh, let you know uh, what you think. Uh, nice one, Rob. That was an interesting to watch. Uh, you're more than welcome. Thank you very much for the kind comments there. Um, Hit that like button, yeah. I mean, one of the things I always forget to do is tell everyone, hit the like button. And what I should have done at the start of the video is tell everybody to share this uh, video on their social media platforms so we could have had more people joining in on the live stream. So yeah, I make mistakes just as much as you, and it's all a learning process. Thank you very much, Dustin Vang, again, for moderating comments. I do really appreciate it. Uh, we, uh, of course, did an audit on your channel in the last episode. Uh, Nitro art video, you're very welcome. Thank you for the kind comments. Uh, Kitchen confidence, yeah, I will hopefully be here next Friday as long as people are happy with me doing the live stream at this time. Have a great day yourself. Extra media sessions. Uh, use a doc. You have a great afternoon and get out there, make great content. Yeah, don't let this uh, monetization issue um, get in the way. Uh, House of Magic, Rob, just 30 seconds on my channel. Unfortunately, we take 30 seconds, well, it take more than 30 seconds to load up that, um, that page. But as I say, future, in the future, hopefully we're going to be doing full-on channel audits. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, video Less Kinder, uh, always happy, great, thank you. Brain Spanking News, I'm starting to like that username more and more. Uh, you're more than welcome. And so that's it. Now, one more thing. Can you remember what my parting um, slogan or tagline is whenever I say goodbye on one of the videos here at vidIQ? I want you to tell me uh, what it might be. Uh, social trends, the next stream is likely to be next Friday, if not before. I always finish off my videos with a, with a strap line, and I want to know if anybody can remember it. It's not, I need those sunglasses. Less time, more views. That's the vidIQ um, tagline. And I say that at the beginning of most of my videos, where you can get more views in less time. Looks as if, uh, looks as if my um, tagline is not going down very well, so I'll let you know what it is. And, let me, and you can remind me what it is next time. Uh, good night and don't have nightmares. This is not Crime Watch. <laughs> is that say, did they say that in the US? Is that a tagline? It's it's on Crime Watch in the UK where um, uh, Nick Ross used to end the TV program with uh, Good Night and Don't Have Nightmares. Anyway, the tagline is, and always will be, enjoy the rest of your video making day and I'll see you again soon on the Friday Feeling Hangout. Goodbye for now.